<laughs> Hello guys, so this is Bernard once again from the Hesse family and as I promised you, I will be bringing you updates with um, nursing and nursing staffs here in UK. Somebody is in Ghana or Nigeria or in any African country and want to come and work as a nurse here in UK. So one question that we usually hear is, um, I'm a degree nurse. Do I need to write IELTS before I come here? Or can I practice as a nurse over here without the IELTS? Because I've been hearing from people that I can take this um, NARIC, yeah, we have, they have this um, NARIC program that you can just enroll on and get your um, English proficiency verified and um, use that as a yardstick to get enrolled on the NMC register. Mm, is it true? Um, I, will, I wouldn't rubbish it off just like that, but I think we also need to consider a lot of things. I always want to get you on the safer side to be on the register. That is what I always do. Sometimes there are ways that seems right for us, but it really doesn't end well with us. And that is exactly what I'm going to take you through. I will start by saying, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Even though when you read from the NMC website, NMC UK website, they are really telling us that you can go to the NARIC process or the NARIC program. But I have a couple of friends who tried to go to the NARIC program, but um, a bit struggled and ended up having to write either IELTS or um, OET. So I think I have evidence with regards to it being true or not. Just stay tuned and you go through um, the English requirement that NMC expects from us, especially as international nurses coming from country where English is not our major language. So I'm currently on the NMC. I have their um, PDF. I know I can't send a PDF like onto the description. I would have done that, but I will leave you with the website so that you can go and read it for yourself. So it's titled guidance on registration language requirements updated june 2023 so that is just last month that they came with this requirement so it starts with why do we ask for evidence of english language that's how it starts and it goes by nurses midwives and nursing associate play a vital role in providing healthcare in the uk as a professional on our register, you must put the interests of people using the or needing nursing and midwifery services first. One, a key part of this is communication and the need to be able to communicate clearly and efficiently in English. Two, in order to register with a nursing and midwifery council, you must satisfy us that you know English to practice safely and effectively as a nursing or midwifery professional in the United Kingdom. This is the equivalent of level C1 in the common European framework of reference for languages. A person with a C1 level of English has a full range of functionality at work or in an academic setting and can be fully autonomous in a native language speaking country. So basically what they are trying to tell us is that they want safe and effective practice of a nurse. So to be able to practice effectively or to be able to be called an efficient nurse here in the UK, you must be able to satisfy English language proficiency. That is, you should be on C1 of the CEFR, that is Common European Framework of reference for languages so this is something that is common so you can see most of the european countries require you to write either IELTS or oet occupational english test before you can practice as a nurse so it is coming from this one and if you are able to get their requirement which i will be talking about very soon it means you are on the c1 and this qualifies you to work as a nurse here in uk okay let's move on so the third part is telling us about the type of evidence that will be accepted so now it is telling us that you must demonstrate competence 
in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. So if you, you have attempted IELTS before, you really understand what they are saying. Because IELTS comprise writing, speaking, listening, and reading. So it's exactly what they are expecting. And we will consider the evidence you receive against the following criteria. Whether it is recent, objective, and independent. So even if you write the IELTS, um, sometimes people say, I wrote the IELTS and it is about to expire. Yes, it has got two years expiration date. So if you don't use it after two years of writing, it also end you in a ditch. <laughs> That's you have to write again. Sorry, you have to write it again after two years. So that is something you also have to consider. And this is not only with NMC UK. If you want to write IELTS to Canada, um, America, any of these countries, Australia and all those stuff, they expect you to be within this range. Some may want you to be within three years, but for UK and US, it's two years that you should consider. Okay, so let's move on. Whether it is clearly demonstrated that you can read, write, communicate, and in interact with, in with patients, service users, relatives, and healthcare professionals effectively in English as a nurse, midwife, or in a role comparable to that of a nursing associate, and whether we can really or readily verify it okay so moving on let's talk about the evidence that they expect so evidence type one type one of what um they expect from you so these are the evidence that you can provide when i talk of this evidence it can either be IELTS or oet so evidence type one you have recently achieved the required score in the academic version of International English Language Testing System. Let me take that part again. You have recently achieved the required score in the academic version, academic version of International English Language Testing System or Occupational English Test. So IELTS have two, we have two variations in IELTS. So we have the general IELTS and we have the academic. So, with the academic, we can have UKVI academic, we can have UKVI general, and we can have the normal academic IELTS and normal general IELTS. So, they want the academic, not general. So, just note that. They want the academic and not general. Okay. So, moving on, you must achieve the required score in reading, writing, listening and speaking so after this i will tell you the required score that they need evidence type two that you have completed a pre-registration nurse or midwife nursing associate program that was taught in and examined in english during that program you must have spent at least half of your time interacting with patients service users and their family and other healthcare professionals, and at least three quarters of these interactions must have been in English. This is where the problem is. You know, when we are in school in Ghana, we are trained in English. So you satisfy the first part of this second evidence. But the second part, which we don't satisfy, is that we hardly communicate with our patients in English. If you agree with me we hardly communicate with our patients in english so mostly when we apply with the naric we satisfy the first part that is being taught in english but when you get to the second part they know we don't communicate with our patients in english because the language that we usually use in ghana is p and that is what Ghanaians, most of Ghanaians, about 90 percent of Ghanaians, um understand so mostly we communicate in p or your car dialect. So mostly when we apply with this UK NARIC, um, it's sometimes like they don't really want to, you know, you understand what I mean. Okay, so moving to the third part, evidence type three. You have recently practiced for one year in a country where English is a majority 
spoken language okay so this is where um, we can channel our mind to so what people usually do is that they will come here to the career routes even if they are having um, degree or diploma as a nurse they come to the career route work over here for a year as a carer and then they apply as a nurse so with that the only thing that they expect from you is uh, somebody with a higher rank with the nursing work that you were doing either you're a carer or something there somebody with a higher rank must certify that yes you were able to communicate in english and if they are able to certify that you were able to communicate in english once the person is a nurse or the person is um, in a higher rank in the health sector um, it is considered and i think mostly that one is considered more than you being like coming with the naric so these are the three evidences that they expect so let's go and explain the evidence one after the other all right so evidence type one you have recently achieved the required score in the academic version of international english language testing system that's IELT or the OET, that's Occupational English Test, you must have achieved the required score in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Okay, so with IELTS, that's what they expect from you. You know, you have four modules, writing, speaking, reading, and listening. So they expect you to at least seven in reading, listening, and speaking. They expect you to get at least seven band. I'll explain that to you, so don't worry. And they expect you to get at least 6.5 in writing. So these are the requirements for IELTS, academic IELTS. So when you sit for the IELTS examination, they expect you, like IELTS, it is marked in what we call band. It starts from band one to band nine. Band one to band nine. So depending on what you score, it's going to tell you the band that you will get so and i think i'll have to do a video on ielts only just to explain some of these things to you just to get the gist of how it looks like before you get into it ielts is not difficult but it is very very trickish and you need a strategy to get everything so you need to get band seven in speaking listening and reading and at least band 6.5 in writing and overall this is going to give you around 7.0 if you don't get this requirement you can not get on the register so let's move on for oet that's for oet you must achieve at least a grade b that is 350 to 440 in reading listening and speaking and at least a grade c that's 300 to 340 in writing i have not taken OET before so I don't know how their system is but I know if you get around 350 to 450 points it's categorize you um, as around B okay and if you get around above 440 it means you are classified as an A yeah so at least you should get grade B in reading listening speaking and at least grade C plus at least grade C plus in writing so that is the requirement for the IELTS and OET now whichever test you take you must have achieved the required score within the last two years at the point we consider your complete application so if you write this take a pen to write it and if you don't complete your NMC registration within two years it means you have to write it again this is also another challenging part you can only complete your nmc registration when you are here in uk that is when you can complete your nmc registration that is only when you are here in uk if you are not here in uk you can't complete because you can only write or take the oski that the second part of the nmc registration exams here in uk okay so what people really do is that sometimes they will search for jobs, search for jobs, search for jobs, and by the time they get a job, they are left with just a month or two for their IELTS to expire. And sometimes getting here is also another challenge. 
So if you are able to get here before your IELTS expire, at least they can you can be considered to just write your IELTS here or OET here, and then voila, you hook on onto the NMC registration and complete everything and get your PIN as a registered nurse here in UK. So regulated um, practice nurse and midwife applicant, you must have successfully completed a language assessment as part of your registration. We will ask. For further information on your English uh, language assessments you undertook, and we may ask for a reference from your employer or employee to confirm your practice period. Okay, so that is the third aspect. That is the third aspect. That is if you want to rely on what I said earlier on. That is if you want recommendation from a matron or somebody with a higher rank over here. That is also the requirement for you. Okay. So, I think that is an aspect to the English language testing system. Now, evidence type 2, a relevant qualification in English. You must have completed an NMC approved return to practice. Okay, let's save ourselves on this. That is not what we are expecting. Okay. Recent practice in a country where English is a majority spoken language. Okay. So, this third part is what I was saying, I'm telling you about. That is, people usually come here through the career routes, pay huge amount of money, that sometimes paying 7,000, 8,000 pounds just to get a career route and come here. And then after a year or two, they transfer or migrate on to. Um, with that, you will not need the IELTS test and you will not need the OET test. All that they expect from you is that you are working here for about a year in a health-related program and you know obviously you're going to communicate in english because here in uk the only language that you speak here is english so um, that's obviously what you're going to communicate in so if you're able to prove that you have worked here for almost a year and you have been communicating in english then voila you are also on the register or you can also be on the register now fitness to practice this is very important listen to this one once you are admitted on the register you must uphold the professional standard that are set out in the code so this is something we are also going to talk about later that's the fitness to practice so guys you didn't see any uk naric in what i read that this is the updated version this is the updated version of the guidance on registration for on registration language requirement that's updated in june 2023 so don't be deceived you can either come through the career routes you are going to pay huge amount of money if you are like you have the cash because even here in uk people here in uk it's very hard to come by like saving up to seven thousand within two or three years like seven seven thousand pounds within two or three years especially if you are a family man it will be very difficult to save up to that with a nurse or with a nursing job <laughs> yeah but this shouldn't kind of um set you down just keep your hopes high and just try IELTS is not difficult we are going to do a video on IELTS how to pass your IELTS and pass it smoothly because for me I didn't even go through like register with any IELTS class we sat in the house and read everything we dedicated our time to it and here we are we passed once and here we are practicing as a nurse so guys I'll leave you here for now but don't forget to subscribe because i have a lot for you trust me i have a lot for you just subscribe subscribe and then hit on the notification bell right down below and that is it here you are thank you very much once again and i will be hitting your screens once again thank you so much bye bye good good